Hello everyone, I'm Xiaoyun, an optical engineer at Allen Institute for Neuron Dynamics, working on the hardware part of the extra spin. With Adam's general introduction about our extra spin system, here I will give more details about the system design and show more images taken by our tech prototype system. As a reminder, this is the extra spin pipeline. After the whole brain expansion, the tissue was mounted in the Duncan holder and put under the extra spin. So this is the system layout. The illumination light is coming from the top and this giant lens collecting the signal from the side. And here's a picture for the portal lab located in our lab. The extra spin system has three key features. The first, leveraging electronics metrology technology enables larger volume imaging with minimum tiling and the micrometer scale resolution. And second, axial sweeping offers near isotropic resolution. Third, the larger power laser combiner improves the image contrast and the signal to noise ratio. This is a simplified illustration of a spin system or a light sheet system. The XY resolution are defined by the imaging objective and the camera, and the Z resolution defined by the illumination device. The maximum sample size is decided by the walking distance of both objectives. Here are our choices for these three key components, specifically using the machine vision inspection objective as our imaging objective, combined with the camera have 10 times larger pixel numbers compared to the typical scientific CMOS cameras, and the system can achieve 0.75 microns per pixel as near as isotropic resolution and 11 by 8 millimeters field view. This is the average the point spread function in XY plane and in XZ plane. The XY resolution is uniformly across the entire field view. Uh, here is the full specifications for the system. It offers four imaging channels. The sample size can be up to 40 by 15 by 42 millimeters. To finish a whole brain scan with one wavelength, the imaging time is about one day and the data set is about 100 terabytes. As we see from the light sheet principle illustration, to achieve a high resolution, Z resolution, the NA of the illumination beam is higher, which means it's only the small zone uh, of the sheet is actually in the focus zone. To achieve a higher resolution uh, through the entire field view, Kevin Dean and his colleagues brought up the idea of axial sweeping. ETL, uh, electrical turnable lens, um, is one way to shifting the focus of the sheet. A camera with a rolling shutter allows only certain number of line pixels are active at one moment. Synchronized ETL with a rolling shutter can create an artificial thin sheet um, on the imaging sensor. A few factors affecting the synchronization. From this picture, it seems like easy to uh, understand when the ETL focuses the beam on the left edge of the imaging field, the rolling shutter starts till the red edge and it stops. But in reality, the ETL is mechanical moving parts. The real focus shifting curve has some lag relatively to the input control signal. Also, the chromatic vibration of the ETL, the thickness of the glass window and the gel surrounding the tissue can affect the focal plane of the beam. Carefully turning the parameters of the ETL control signal is very important for a good synchronization. Using the ETL for axis sweeping is seen for traditional uh, spin system, but the extra spin has a huge advantage due to the larger sensor size. The Hamamazon camera frame rate is about 100 Hz. Ideally, the traditional spin system imaging frame rate can be up to 100 Hz but the ETL generates a mechanical movement here to change the focus, and it has a limited speed about 15 Hertz. So the real imaging speed is only 50 frame, 15 frames per second. For the extra spin, because the camera has a larger pixel numbers to cover about 20 times bigger field view, 
the bottom neck here is the data transfer rate, which restricts the camper frame rate about 5 Hz. So the ETL is no longer the uh, limiting factor anymore. Although the frame rate is slow for the actual spin, the actual data throughput is still very high, uh, way higher than the traditional spin system. So the imaging speed is way higher in this way. One challenge for the actual spin is the laser power. Since the field view is larger now, the same amount of light that used to be spread out along a narrow sheet now has to cover about five times wider sheet, which is not sufficient for a good SNR. And here showed an example. The same region was imaged using the ultra spin system. The left one was using the typical 100 to 200 milliwatts laser. The right one was using a 10 times higher power laser. Clearly, the right image has a better SNR, offers more detailed information. We built the custom laser combiner with one watts lasers. Right now, we have three lasers, 642 and 560 and 488 nanometers. And we're still exploring the addition of a 405 laser. All lasers using the AOTF or acoustic optical turnable filter to modulate the output power. Here are some example images taken by our extra spin system. This picture is an expanded brain mounted in a zampo holder. The sign dashed line here shows the shape of the brain. The brain was embedded in the hydrogel cube and the whole cube was surrounded by the acros. The image only contains 12 tiles to cover the entire brain. So this is the whole brain image after stitching the 12 tiles. Now we zoom in the um, cerebellum uh, cerebellum area and continue to zoom in and again, again, and again. So the small slit feature in this uh, picture is about one micron. Consider the extension factor of the brain is about 4x and the effective resolution for the system is about 250 nanometers. This is another example. The video moves along the Z direction for all the 12 tiles and stitch together. Within the zoom in view, we can see the registration between the two adjacent tiles are pretty good. Uh, this is another advantage of the extra spin system. Shorter imaging time leading to the less tissue distortion and the reduced number of tiles reduced the amount of work for the registration even if it's just a natively registering the image based on the state coordinates, the result is already looks pretty good. So here's another example of a mouse brain uh, imaged under the 488 nanometers laser. I'll just let the video play here. Go through different regions with higher resolution. Okay, this is overall the current status of our current extra spin system. In the future, we plan to use power lens instead of the cylinder lens to improve the uniformity of the light sheet. The sample image here is taken by the um, cylinder lens uh, profile. We can see on the left and the right edge and with much dimmer and then the center area. Also, we will redesign the optics and the mechanics so that the system is easier to share with the whole community. Um, people are just looking forward to see it happens in the middle of this year. 
Thank you for watching the Extra Spin hardware introduction. Please go to the next video to get more information about the acquisition software or navigate yourself to any interested video. Thank you.